Hi, I'm Sharon from Little Ballet Creations and welcome to the episode in my short little mini series entitled English Paper Piecing, Back to Basics. So in episode one, we covered the basic supplies that you will need before you start English Paper Piecing. So this episode, I thought we would touch on you getting your first kit. What happens? What do you do? What to expect? So these are my kits. All Little Bell Lane English Paper Piecing kits are now totally eliminated of one use plastic so the kits are now presented in these wonderful boxes so each one comes in its very own box beautifully presented easy to store I kind of like the idea of them sitting on a shelf as projects waiting to be completed or otherwise known as retirement fund projects you know we've all got a little stash and I think these are super cute way to have them presented easy storage you can throw everything back in etc so let's open one today we're going to open the grand paddle wheel kit so let me just move these ones out of the way maybe a bit further so this is the grand paddle wheel kit and this is the kit the sorry the quilt that it makes so as you can see this quilt has fussy cutting in it so we have the centers which we can do some kaleidoscope or alternate fussy cutting as well as some highlight fussy cutting on the outside you can choose to, if you want to fussy cut these triangles or these diamonds and then it has a bit of strip cutting in it as well so during this video we're going to discuss strip cutting and basic glue basting the fussy cutting is going to be in the final episode episode three Okay, so let's unbox a Grand Paddle Wheel kit and have a look at what you get inside. Open the box. Beautifully presented. It's a bit like a gift to yourself. We'll open it. Now, like I said, we've eliminated all one-use plastics from our kits and packaging. So everything comes presented in white paper bags because you can't see through them. We've made sure... The each bag is labelled so you obviously know what's inside and it's easier to quick glance to see. So we've got templates and then we've got bags of the shapes. All Little Bell Lane Creations kits come with the shapes individually packaged so you don't have to worry about sorting the shapes into their shape. That's all pre-done for you. And then we have a pattern. So we've got the full A5 pattern. And this one has a bonus fussy cutting bureau as well. Let's move a box out of our way. So beautifully presented A5 pattern. Lots of colour photos so you can see the original box used in the quilt. Um, please always go and check the website for pattern updates before proceeding. That's just not my patterns. That's anyone's patterns, regardless of designer, method of construction. Please, good habit to always go and check. Um, we've got a info here, we've got more blocks, we've got information on strip cutting which I'm going to be showing you in a second, we've got the different types of fussy cutting, we've got more photos of blocks for you to see, page doesn't want to turn, we've got best basting, we've got construction, more construction, we've got final quilt assembly adding borders how to trim it's not scary to trim and add borders to an epp quilt it's really simple um yeah border measurements your binding instructions this is the quilt i've made but i also give you instructions on this one how to grow it make it bigger how to calculate your lengths of your borders if you've grown it bigger and then your basic instructions for epp in the back and like with all Little Bow Lane Creation EPP patterns, if you've got a brother scanner cut, the shapes are in here for you and you can create your own cut files. So let's have a look at templates. If you're brand new to EPP, you may not understand what's up with templates and why certain things are on them. So let's just have a quick look. So this one has four templates. Let's just pick one. This is the center triangle wedge. So this is this piece in the center. So down here, across here and here. So if I put it down there, you can see. So on all your EPP templates, I don't know the best way to help you see this. Let's get the bag back. 
can you see the dashed line okay anything inside the dashed line is what you're going to see on your finished epp piece of work project whatever block that is the size of the epp papers so i said anything in that dash line is what you're going to see so if i bring this over here and put it down here that triangle in the center there and i appreciate this could be really hard to see but that triangle there is what's the inside of my shape all my templates come with these reference holes these are great if you're actually a hand piecer let's bring back this white bit back if you're a hand piecer you can trace your templates on your fabric put your reference marks holes on your fabric like put a pencil in them and mark it and then trace lines and then you can hand piece um, also comes into play when we fussy cut as well but more on that in a minute okay this pattern uses both fussy cutting let me see if i move this over a bit more okay this pattern uses like i said fussy cutting so our centers are fussy cut uh, that's a kaleidoscope center so we can do symmetrical fussy cutting and a non-symmetrical fussy so symmetrical fussy cutting is when you're taking a piece of fabric that if you chopped it in half both sides are exactly the same so you get the kaleidoscope effect in the middle a non-symmetrical is basically where you can't cut it in half but you can get some great movement in designs by cutting the same element out multiple times so you can see like the green here has like a moving gives it a bit of a motion to the block and then the squares are what I call highlight fussy cutting so you're just cutting out an element so it sits by itself okay so I've also fussy cut my tent dots and my tent stripes on all of them and my low volume background here is strip cut so what we're going to cover in the rest of this short video we're going to have a quick look at strip cutting and we're going to have a quick look at glue basting the fussy cutting is going to be episode three and the final episode in this little mini series so i'll be back in a sec i'm just going to set up my cutting mat and we're going to have a look at strip cutting okay so on this pattern we are going to strip cut the low volume background now strip cutting is really easy it's super fast method to knock over the prep work on basically pieces that don't have to be fussy cut so you can do this on every piece on a quilt if you're not fussy cutting just because i fussy cut a quilt doesn't mean you have to but hey feel free to give it a go it can become your next addiction so let's back to strip cutting strip cutting is really simple what you want to do is cut strips of fabric the same size as your template so what i'm going to do yeah i'm going to cut it that way so i am going to measure the height of my template so the height from here to here and cut my width of fabric strips to match so you just put it over your ruler so i've got it sitting at the top and i come down here now you will see it's just shy of two inches so i'm going to round up i'm not going to worry and try and stress and cut this at what is it an eighth short of two inches i'm not going to muck around with that so two inch strip simple we go and cut and in my patterns it will tell you how many strips you need to cut we just isn't simply cut I'm only cutting one for today for today's purposes two inch strip whoops guess who needs a new blade in their rotary cutter that's embarrassing <laughs> not really but hey okay get rid of the ruler turn it around yes i like to leave mine folded in multiple layers if i was cutting a whole heap of these in one go i would actually open this up press that crease out and layer multiple strips on top of each other not going to do that today because obviously i need a new rotary cutter blade and it's just not going to go through but if i had a super sharp blade i could get maybe six eight layers of fabric so i'm just going to center that remember we cut this a fraction bigger than the template so i'm just going to center my template and i'm just going to come along here i'm just going to cut this is my first one so i just need to trim the other end flip it around trim and then take off my dog ears i've just cut two pieces knock that one out of the way 
it doesn't have to be exact we're English paper piecing we're going to hide that in the seam so I'm just going to come along here and I'm just going to really quickly I'm going to lay these on top even though I don't have the sharpest of blades in my rotary cutter at the moment so what's that two four six eight Ten. So I'm going to get 14 pieces out of my strip of fabric. Okay, get rid of them. I'm just going to layer these up on top of each other. You can leave the dog ears on if you want, but I'm taking them off. I like to reduce the bulk. So I'm just going to cut that one off and cut that one off. Okay, that's my strip cutting. They say 14 pieces. Yes, I need a new rotary blade. We've already discussed that. 14 pieces done, ready to be basted. Super easy. So it doesn't matter what the shape is. Like I said, you can just do whatever. So if I was doing this shape, which I'm not for this pattern because this would be fussy cut, I would measure it. It comes in a fraction shy of three inches. So I'm going to cut my strips at three inches. And then when I go to cut my fabric, I'm going to go up, rotate it as we go across. Um, the same for the smaller one. Again, you would just measure it against your ruler. <laughs> if I can find which way the ruler goes. Okay, and it is just shy of it's a little bit more shy of two and a half so i'm just going to again cut that to two and a half inches and do the same process and the squares well it's a square if you're not fussy cutting you can just rotary cut your squares with just your ruler so that is the basics of strip cutting i am just going to reset this up and we're going to have a quick look at glue basting okay let's have a quick look at glue basting I've totally changed shapes on you because white basting on a white background on white papers was not going to work. So these are pieces I need for my galaxy quilt and they're black and white. It's going to be easy for you to see. So I've cut these. We will get into cutting and fussy cutting in episode three and uh, the first installment of the galaxy sew along slash block of the month video when it goes up. We're going to go into fussy cutting in a lot more depth. So don't stress about that one just yet. We need to get the glue basting happening. So that's my pile. It's my papers. And this is the shape that I'm basting. So a glue pen has this amazing glue in it. It is retractable. They're quite long. This one's relatively new. So let's take a look. Goes right down to here. Has got quite a bit of glue on it. Now, if you're new to glue basting, it could take you a little bit to get the hang of. You need to be light-handed, not heavy-handed. The idea of a glue pen is that you actually hold it like a pen. When you're applying the glue to your papers, you only want to use the tip of the glue. None of this straight up and down, full. You know, okay, I'm just I'm going to do one. None of this. If you do that, you're going to get, where's my camera? <laughs> you're going to get too much glue on there. It's And that's going to make it really hard to remove your papers down the track. I'm going to throw that one away. So like I said, hold it like a pen, treat it like a pen, because it is a pen, it just has glue in it. So pretend that this is not a fussy cut circle and I'm going to be really fussy on where I place my papers. But all you're going to do is centre your paper into the middle of your fabric now I'm centering this so that I don't get any of the white on it we're going to go to the side we're just going to do one swipe across on the angle and we're just going to fold it over and push down now you want to push the fabric nice and firm against your paper because you want to create a nice straight line we don't want any excess bits at the corner I'm going to turn it, I'm going to go on my fabric with my glue pen and stripe across, swipe across Sharon and we're going to fold it. Now at the corner, I need you to really push it over against the point. 
I have a tendency, I don't know if you just noticed then, I always put my finger on the corner that I've just basted. It just gives it that few extra seconds just to get the adhesion of the glue. And we just work around again. So I'm trying to leave a small gap of the glue between the edge of the paper. So I'm going to swipe over this one again. So I'm just swiping and trying to leave. This is going to come into play later on when I'm sewing my pieces together. So I'm not sewing through any gunk of any glue. So we're working our way around. Now it's up to you if you work clockwise or anti-clockwise. I just suggest you get into the habit of always working in the same direction. Okay, so that's me basted. And the whole idea is to get nice defined points at our corners. We don't want any excess fabric at these corners because we haven't folded it over tight enough. The excess fabric, excess fabric will come into play, especially when you're playing with things like six point diamonds, because when you come to get all those points in together, let me just grab something I haven't shown you yet, but hey, here's something I prepared earlier. When you get all these six points coming in together, if you've got excess fabric on your papers, they're not going to meet neatly. They're not going to meet nicely. It's just going to create extra width when all these come together. So if we look at the back of this, I've basted all my papers. I go down a bit. All my papers in the same way, which means all my tails are going to swirl nicely in the center. Okay, so let's just baste a couple more. So I'm just centering it in because I don't want any of those white dots showing on my finished piece and I'm just going to start working my way oh, I'm stuck to my sandpaper board around my shape so you can see I'm always holding my finger on the corner I've just basted I don't know if you've noticed I have developed a habit of turning my pen as I work around the shapes okay and you just Based away to your heart's content. Now, if, less, if you're new to English paper piecing and you're new to glue basting, this is going to feel really awkward and clumsy. But like with everything, it takes practice. So don't be too harsh on yourself. Ideally, we just want one swipe of the glue. And you work your way around. So as you can see, it becomes a very quick process to glue base your shape. So that process of working around clockwise or anti-clockwise, it doesn't matter what shape you're doing. Just try to, like I said, try to get into a habit of always doing the same way. So there's three basted really quickly. So again, um, like I said before, when we get to the Galaxy Month 1 videos, it'll be a lot more in-depth about basting and you'll see basting of six-point diamonds so I hope that helps with those who are new to English paper piecing. Gives you a little bit of basic information. While well, I've got my binding clips here, if I was, say this was an element of a quilt and I was grouping together multiple pieces to throw in a sewing bag to take away with me, this is where my binding clips come in handy. I just throw the binding clip on them and that unit's ready to sew. Okay, thank you. Come back for episode three and we will look at fussy cutting.